Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wastewater Operations Channel. This will be episode three of our tour of the Boulder Park Biosolids project. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below, or leave me a comment. So there's our first biosolid sighting. Just stored in the field. So they just plant the test plots at the normal rate every year. Yeah, well, he's done some recropping and some spring crops. And we had canola on him last year. Gotcha. But the biosolid rates are consistent. It's, there's a plot two dry temper acre, three dry temper acre, four and a half dry, dry temper acre. Gotcha. So it's their experiment. Yeah. It's ongoing. Yeah. Which is basically, you know, kind of a little bit under applied average how we apply about sure. typical is three ton so real world verification and then four and a half is a little over applied and that's conducted by the same people that help you develop agronomic rates yep so that's right. awesome yeah, yeah and they've that. used that because you know right they have over the years lowered our application rates i see from where they were 20 years ago is that of course we're farmers so we little's good more is better is that due to the that bioavailability or the longer the longer um, benefit of the biosolids? I think it's more due to just uh, figuring out agronomic rate, like how much does the crop actually need? I see to be successful and not lose ni excess nitrogen to the ground. Right, I see. I got you. That was another question I think I had um, about uh, water table testing, so like leachate and all that. Like, um, I imagine it's not as big of a problem in an area where there's not a lot of groundwater, but do you still have to do testing for... So we do voluntary groundwater testing uh -huh. once a year. Okay. So any site, any well that's within a quarter mile of our site gets uh, a groundwater test. Oh, okay. And we also do them further away if people want us to. I see. They okay. Request it. And typically, and I would guess that's not really, a, doesn't really show problems or. Well, a lot of these, the shallow wells, a lot of the old hand dug wells right. from early on, 20, 30, 40 feet deep, right. are polluted with um, nitrate. Gotcha. From the commercial fertilizer. Right. From all fertilizers. Yeah, so yeah. each one of these is a test plot. This, and it's replicated three times, so this is the first replicate, actually the third replicate of it. But I'll go down and turn around and then we'll, uh, we'll step out and walk through. That's a heck of a spring crop. I mean, it looks good. One more rain on it, man. But you may get to A lot of times, you know, we can have spring crops like this that there's almost nothing. <laughs> Oh, I see. Because it's so moisture dependent, you know, spring gotcha. cropping is. So this was planted last year. This was planted this May. And it had a crop on so you don't have the residual moisture. We're in the summer fall of rotation because we're banking that two years worth of moisture for one crop. Right. Because we just don't get enough rain, you know. There's not a lot of annual crop. We just applied this with biosolids in April. Before that, 
it hadn't been applied since October of 2015. And he had raised a crop of triticale and then a crop of canola on it. And the canola, second crop, no amendment, outperformed the commercial, which had an additional 50 pounds of nitrogen, five pounds of sol uh, phosphorus, and 10 pounds of sulfur or something like that. He had an extra 60 bucks an acre into the commercial, whereas this the canola was second crop and it still outperformed. Huh. He had zero. He had zero, zero money. Zero in. money. And three tons is the standard. Pretty typical range. Yeah. Gotcha. This one must be two tons. Slightly less than what we do. And we'll harvest these and, and weigh them. You know, so we'll have a they go 700 feet. Right. We'll bring a combine in here and make one pass through the middle of it. So you take a specific surface area. Yeah, and then we'll and then, and then we'll weigh that. Each. Check the yield. I got you. No, that's very cool. So we've got data. Regular fertilizer. He's yeah. He's got. I imagine you know 40, 50 bucks an acre. So, um, the farmers, so typically biosolids, they cost the farmer about 25 bucks an acre to fertilize with um, biosolids. Whereas, and you're getting all 16 plant essential uh, nutrients with that. Right. Whereas just nitrogen application on commercial is running the farmer 35 bucks an acre. And he's also probably putting down sulfur and and phos, and phos possibly. And it is not wet. <laughs> and you can see the control over here. Yeah, it's a different color. Look down the road. And this is oats. Yeah. This has had no fertilizer for since 1994. It's just dirt. Huh. Crazy. Doesn't seem like too hard of a sell, right? <laughs> this is four and a half by separation. A little more. Yeah. So, so biosolids, I mean, it needs a little time, moisture, and temperature in order to mineralize out the nitrogen. Yeah. Um, But you can see some miles on it. Oh yeah. Here it is. That might not be Lakota, but you never know, right? No. This is, this is all South Plant. Oh, we, we use the same treatment plant every time. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So. Yeah, and we're not. You know, how much of this? How much of the amendment we're getting good out of on this crop because it was surface applied and and right and seeded right behind us. Yeah that we're probably, probably the majority of the goodie we're getting is from the past applications. Gotcha. Yeah. So the second crop will probably benefit more from this application just because it's had more time to mineralize. Gotcha. But still, you know, this biosolids amend it's going to win. Sure. You know, no question. Always does. Never, never have, never have we not won. get a rain on her today yeah so from the busy city this is where that ends up 
all the way out here. It's awesome. Yeah, then you know, Lake Chelan's just right, the Columbia River's just right here. Yeah. Boulders, this is why it's Boulder Park. They start right here at the edge when they go to apply. These are 700 feet long. Right. So they'll get a little bit of avalanching right here where they start off and then boom, they're gone. When they go to harvest this in order to get a, a correct um, or accurate accounting for the yield, they'll only, these are 50 feet wide. So they'll, they'll go right down the middle, uh, 30 feet wide. Oh, so okay. they're leaving 10 feet on either side. I got you. In case there was any, you know, um, overlap, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whatnot. There's an avalanche right here right. starting out. But, you know, where they're seeding into it, where their drills coming through, it's their drills go down three inches or right. so when they're seeding in. And that helps incorporate even more so. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Anything that's surface. They got the monitors and their combines, you know, they can, and it's telling them they're cutting 40 bushel wheat. I pull, see. You know, the next field they pull into and it's biosolids amended and they're cutting 60. So they're getting real time information on yeah, what they're yeah. doing. You guys, I mean, this is, it's a much more technical <laughs> endeavor than I guess I imagined. Mm -hmm. And they know, yeah, they know. Uh, Dave always says, you know, that the farmer is actually our ultimate regulator. Right. Yeah. So if we weren't satisfying them, they wouldn't come back for the fertilization next year. Sure. Because yeah. you know, they're paying for it. <clears throat> well, and their investment is the, it's not just biosolids, right? I mean, it's their time and their effort, and, yeah, and it's that's their, their life, right? It's so, their livelihood. Yeah, yeah, I mean. So if we, if we destroyed their crop, if we didn't make them money, they wouldn't, wouldn't have any interest in it. Right. Uh, how does, I don't want to go too far into it, Dave, but um, does the project, I mean, is it sustainable? I guess that's a weird way to say that. Does the project totally fund itself? Does it mostly fund itself? Um, well, we're, we, we live off the tip that you guys pay us. I see. We don't, the, the money we gather, get from the farmer, we return that back to the treatment plants. Right. So that's, you know, it's kind of smoke and mirrors, but in a, But the hauling costs cover the operation then. Right, the, you know, the, okay. the, the price that I charge yeah, yeah. you, I'm charging you for haul and application. Right. You know, yeah. yeah, so even even King County as a partner in this deal, we're still paying BPI a tip. Sure, yeah. And yeah. so they're making, they're making money off it. This, um, I just wanted to point out, this is a weather station. Mm-hmm. So WSU has a, a whole network, it's called Ag WeatherNet. And um, you can purchase a weather station and then pay an annual maintenance fee. Mm -hmm. So we did this here for the test plot and the farmers benefit off it. So any farmer can look up the weather off of this station. I see. And there's three up on the plateau, one down in Waterville, one out east in St. Andrew, and then this one. So it's kind of a triangle. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> farmers love it. So there, is that like, uh, 
that's data to use over time. Oh yeah, and ev yeah, everything's yeah. recorded. It's real time you. and historic. So that's awesome. No, I look at it all the time. Just you know, how much did it rain? You know? Right. So because every you know, farmers have their rain gauges, but you know. Sure. So that's a variable at our test plots that now. So that's been installed in 2016. Gotcha. So, before you would say, well, why did you know biosolids outperform um, commercial? Well, was weather a factor? Blah blah blah. And so now we have some scientific weather data that right. can help answer some questions. Yeah, do that comparison over time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can, well, it can really, you know, the rainfalls can really vary in the, sure. across the county, especially with the thunderstorms. Yeah. And being that the biosolids are a, a, a moisture. Uh, amendment also I would imagine that's only going to add benefits I mean if you can if you can show that biosolids still produce that crop even in the low rainfall that's yeah that's the idea right is mm, but in but we gotta have rain yeah for <laughs> sure. biosolids won't grow wheat without right. rain so this area it produces about 12 7 to 12 inches of rain a year on average okay whereas on the west side we're looking at 40 plus yeah. inches of rain a year. Some people ask me, why don't we use more biosolids on the west side? And basically three main factors is uh, population, um, too much rain, and um, just, I guess, the difficulty of permitting ground. And yeah, yeah. It seems like the few that have operated on the west side have, it's been tough on them. I mean, yeah. They tend on applying the same ground over and over and over again, which leads to issues. There's a lot more due to the rain and yeah. just the topography. I mean, there's a lot more surface water. So that those are applied, this is all applied. Right? like I can count the loads here. <laughs> I'm at the end of the month. I'll tally all my tonnage for this field and see where I'm at. Oh, I see. I'm comfortable that we're not over full right now, but we're getting close. We got Pierce County came for a couple weeks. Right. You haven't heard from them. I guess I'm still getting loads. I Are you? What the last day was going to be. And that's the Tito's. Yep. 98% solids. Yeah, I think the crunch tells you everything you need yeah. to know. <laughs> oh. So that truck has to be full on volume, not weight. Yeah, right? exactly. He's only bringing yeah. us about eight ton, where you're bringing tough. us thirty ton. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so we had them out here. I ha I've had a farmer in, in so, so Homish want loot biosolids, and I told him, you know, for the reasons why I just said, you know. Many people 
lots of rainfall, lots yeah. of surface water, and uh, the permitting on small acreage ground just isn't worth it. Um, I said alder woods nearby, maybe they would be willing to, you know, provide some biosolids to you, class A unregulated, you could use it. And Alderwood said no. Huh. Alder, Alderwood said, I know where it's going, I know how it's being managed, you know, as a facility we want, don't want the liability for risk it, yeah. management. Yeah. And uh, it's going for beneficial use, which is our goal. Right. And um, so they they wanted it to continue to come this way. Huh. Which is good. Yeah. So the loads will get dumped. Delivered. Delivered. Tractor. <laughs> I'm catching on. <laughs> then the tractors are gonna load it into the spreaders and the spreaders are gonna apply it to the individual areas where it's set. Then that machine, that machine's recording where it's putting it, you're getting all that data back. Monitoring over yeah, we'll the see all of this in color, you know, on the yeah. on the computer tonight. Yeah. That tractor right now in its DPS has the treatment plant logged in, so we know exactly where that material, gotcha. that treatment plant's material, is being spread in this year. Gotcha. So, uh, we go over here. We can hop in a tractor too. Uh, <laughs> it's a few. Well. I don't know if I should turn down an offer like that. <laughs> I'm actually, I can drive a loader for sure. Uh, I don't know about a spreader. <laughs> no, you just ride. You can ride with them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you have to be VPI certified to actually drive. Them. Well, it's not that low tech as what you're saying. It's, uh, I'll move. We, 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 we want to explain the initiation process. <laughs> <laughs> it is Eastern Washington. Right. 